Well, this is Women's Health Week, and each night we focus on a different health issue affecting women. We continue tonight with the topic of fibroids, very familiar to a lot of us. 20 to 80 percent of women develop fibroids by the time they reach 50 years old. Women who develop symptoms often find fibroids hard to live with, cause pain, and heavy menstrual bleeding. Well, here with us to discuss this important topic is Dr. Taruba Prabhakar. She is a OBGYN at Maimonides Medical Center and attending physician and fellow in minimally invasive gynecologic surgery. I dare you to say all those words. <laughs> and Jessie Thompson is the author of Hope Beyond Fibroid. She is a former patient who suffered with infertility and is now a fertility coach. Welcome, ladies, to Arise America. Thank you, for Thank you so us. much yeah. for coming. We've got a lot to talk about in, unfortunately, a short period of time. But, Jessie, I want to start with you with okay. your story. Mm -hmm. And as I read about it, it's just incredible, incredible what you've been. How bad were fibroids for you? It was huge. Um, all along the 10 year journey, it really was the, kept the thing, the hurdle I kept having to fight. You know, um, I had three myomectomies and each one ended up with um, complications where I had to have another surgery. So you're talking about a 10 year battle, five major surgeries, and then I had a miscarriage because the, in the infertility ensued. So I had to do IVF. It wasn't just something that affected me where I just had to have the myomectomy. Now I had restricted options for having a child. So I had five IVF cycles. And then um, my heart stopped on the table in the surgery. And, but I have a miracle baby. Yeah, yeah, and you're really jumping over uh, the, the story. A lot of people know. I want to I want to stop and, and just point out to some viewers who don't know medical terminology. Absolutely. Myomectomy is a surgical removal of the fibroid without uh, removing the entire uterus. Correct. And I just want to take a moment and pull out something in yes. your story. You know, through all of these courses of I, IVF and your myomectomies, these surgeries to treat the fibroids, mm -hmm. they would come back and they come back Every worse four than... Every five-year cycle. It, that's why I said it was like this hurdle I kept having to fight. Did it take it over worse. your life and how you felt as it, a woman? It became worse every time. It was at the point where, um, you know, I work with a nonprofit called the White Dress Project because we talk about wearing white, which I'm wearing today. Because the last go round, I was hemorrhaging so much. You can imagine what that means. You know, Do yes. you didn't feel like you could wear white. Yeah, right? absolutely, absolutely. Right. Exactly. And so I want to bring you in, doctor. Yes. So first of all, so many people, so many women, particularly women of color, right. have fibroids. Let's just talk about what are they and why are they so overrepresented uh, in yes. African American women. So fibroids are benign. Um, they grow. They're muscle tumors that grow in the wall of the uterus. They can be inside the uterus as well as right outside the uterus. Um, you're right in that it is overrepresented in women of color and especially African. African Americans, but unfortunately today, even with all the research that's going on, we don't know, we can't pinpoint uh, one reason as to why this is. There are some genetic factors, some environmental, but there's a lot of research still going on. I mean, honestly, I don't think I've ever met a black woman that didn't have fibroids. Right. It seems it's like true. we all Absolutely. have them, but when do they become a problem? Right. When do they pose a health risk? Right, so they actually start right in the early 20s and um, go on to the 30s and 40s, but in black women, oftentimes we see it in the childbearing age, which is the mid-20s. Yes. They present with pain, bleeding, and uh, depending on the location of the fibroids can certainly be a problem in terms of fertility. And I remember when I was growing up, and even in my earlier adulthood, uh, talking to women who were dealing with those extreme fibroids Absolutely. that you've dealt with, and there were two options. You either dealt with it, or you got a hysterectomy. There's a lot more out there, a lot of other options out there now. Absolutely, and, and very fortunately so. So you can do medical management in terms of you know, a birth control pills or Lupron. Um, and as you mentioned, the other extreme was hysterectomy for those who really um, had extremely big fibroids. But uh, thankfully today we have options like uterine artery embolization and uh, most importantly minimally invasive surgery for just the fibroid removal which is a myomectomy. We use the laparoscope, we use uh, the robotic platform today and that's what I do um, and it's, it's absolutely wonderful. Women can go home the same day and return to work and um, <laughs> get back their lives. Truly, the good news is is that there is hope, and absolutely. I know that that's your message yes, now, Jesse. Before absolutely. we talk a little bit about your new mission in life because yes. of your experience, <laughs> you have a beautiful little girl who yes, is the living, breathing rocks. example uh, <laughs> that there is hope. I think we have a absolutely. picture of her. Let's put Nia up. Mwah. So you got, you finally got pregnant after yes. how many rounds of IVF? Five IVF. After five IVF rounds, yes. and then at 21 weeks, I understand that you found out that the fibroids were literally, literally. sucking the life out of your baby. 
fighting. Literally, she was fighting for her life. That's and so correct. you went on bed rest, hospitalized bed no, rest. we were. She was oh. my doctor, caring for me in the hospital. Yes. Yeah, yeah for a, what, I think months. Uh, for two yeah. months, mm -hmm. and then gave birth, birth mm -hmm. to Nia prematurely. Healthy, strong, feisty. But tiny. <laughs> but why is it important? So this have really has changed some of your mission in life and Absolutely. what you do. Why is it so important? So important to minister hope to women who deal with fibroids. You know, when you're going through something so traumatic, sometimes you don't realize the impact you can have on other people. And um, when Essence, you know, was gracious to allow me the platform to share my story, and it's in the May issue of, uh, of the magazine, um, they actually touched on something that. It became a rippling effect. Women all over messaged me. It was like 33,000 likes on their Facebook page. They were messaging not just their comments of, you know, this is good, but, oh, my God, you gave me hope that I don't have to give up. Mm -hmm. So now we form this Circle of Hope prayer group for them, mm -hmm. and we're writing this book, Hope Beyond Fibroids, because the key thing is we want to tell all their stories. You know, when I hear women say, my God, you don't understand, I was ready to give up. I was that one IVF cycle away from giving up. And because I heard a story that encouraged me, I didn't give up and I have the greatest miracle for it. And that's what I want to ask you mm -hmm. finally, Dr. Yes. Prabhupada, is Jessie the exception of the rule? She had extreme fibroids and was able to have a baby. Does, is it possible for those women out there who have similar circumstances? Yes, and we. I mean, this is what I do every day. We operate on women with um, tons of fibroids, large fibroids, walking around for years, and there is definitely hope with all the options available today. Early detection, awareness, and um, treatment. Hope. That's that's what yes. we brought here today, Dr. Charuba Prabhakar and Jesse Thompson. Thank you both. Thank and congratulations you. on the beautiful Thank girl. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. much. Take care.